Who is this 19-year-old challenging Tour de France champ Jonas Winguga? Croatia race stage five, one of the best 2-1 stages I've ever seen, like finishing in Labin. It had a long climb at the start, and I know all these races do it for tourism and whatever. It's been overcast Croatia, but it's kind of made me want to go to Croatia. Like A lot of the scenery looks good. Looks good. Jonas had some fans at the start, and Jonathan Milan looking a bit nervous, worried about the parkour to come. This was the Queen stage, and they kind of did it with the longer climb at the start and then a hilly circuit like they've had in a lot of the other stages to finish uh, with an uphill finish. And that meant that the race, if you wanted to drop Milan and keep him drop, would have to be split early, which meant that from 70 k's out, you would have some pretty open racing. Unfortunately, the coverage didn't cover that uh, climb, I don't think, properly at the start or live. And you saw at the start, y- Yamo Visma monitoring who's getting in the break. Like they wouldn't a Tour de France stage for Vingegaard, making sure it's a small controllable break barring there too. And it was. And then I think obviously on the main climb, they absolutely lit it up with probably Bowman. And then the Narwhal of Rurlo, the best descender in the world, perhaps after Bill Bow, Heis Lameriser, you see pacing. So the group is 10 guys right now with Milan dropped and there's Vingegaard there with uh, two from DSM, only in Hamilton, Egg and Torsten Train from UnoX, and I think Albanese from Yolo. So he, he's a good rider, Albanese, and uh, they don't keep the group that small that people come back, but then DSM are pacing in the valley. We still got 70 Ks to go, two minute gap. You have to keep pacing to keep Milan behind. And DSM do, Jumbo Visma do with Graham Riser for Vingegaard. He's now the sort of leader virtually on GC. Only is moving into third on GC. And these are small gaps, like six seconds between him and Morich, who's provisionally second on GC. Ineos have uh, formerly Bernal's friend, but now having to get some results. Brandon Rivera up there on GC too. So a lot of teams with multiple riders, some with two sort of threats on GC, like Morich and Buitrago in this group. Hamilton's close too with only there. And Jumbo Visma just have Vingegaard, who is virtually leading, but he doesn't have a co-leader threat, unlike the other teams. But Castro Viejo kills Milan and uh, Bahrain's chase. Castro, an absolute beast, won uh, the Giro for Bernal in 2021, and Pernstein gives up the go. So the gap is 240, 23 k's to go. They do the first loop or rep of this finish, which is, again, a cobbled pave, sort of steep pinch, and now Vingegaard but that gap stable starts to get attacked. Big problems for Vingegaard in this stage. It's like Basque Country Stage 6, 2021. Train goes, this guy had, uh, I think, surgery for testicular cancer like 12 weeks ago, and he's top 10 in this race on GC and really good performance from him. So shout out to Paulson Train on UnoX, and he's joined by Oscar Only, and then Bahrain will send a rider forward, Butrago, who's close on GC, I think later, and Yambo Visma or Vingar's looking around. Who to help? Nobody. He just gets attacked by Brandon Rivera and Buitrago. So this is a group he cannot live with, or Frail, sorry, not Rivera, because it has all of D- it has DSM, Bahrain, and Ineos represented. And so no one will help him chase except maybe Yolo Kometa. And when he brings that back, he gets attacked again by Morich. Only goes again. Perhaps Hamilton could have gone with this one and the gap would have opened up. But yeah, Vingegaard with 20 Ks to go, being put under a lot of pressure, attacked over and over and over again. And now a group goes with guys not so close on GC. Frailer, Hamilton, Wittrago. That gap goes to 46 seconds with Vingegaard pacing behind and he gets bailed out by his Danish compatriot on UNOX, Nicholas Egg. And maybe Frailer wasn't that committed because he was a fair bit behind, I think, Buitrago on GC. He's on like 120. So he'd need to somehow put a minute into them and he's got Rivera behind. So that group gets brought back, but... Real trouble for Vingegaard. He can't afford to have that same situation repeat itself on the next loop before the finish, which they're going to do again. And so he tries to thin this out. Well, he doesn't try. He does thin this out. Only the only one that's able to follow him closely on is Will Morich, about a couple of seconds behind with Train. And this drops all the co-leaders. This drops the domestiques Hamilton. It drops Frailer. And so he's trying to 
make this a manageable group because if it's just leaders, then if one attacks, the others will chase them rather than sending a co-leader with them and making Vingegaard chase. So he now has the group largely whittled down to what he wants with 11 Ks to go, but he's having to put in a lot of effort and no one's invincible. And you see, you know, 11 Ks to go trying to drop Morich and it's not like it's an HC climb either. It's undulating terrain and he's just making sure he has only one rider from each team represented and he's fortunate to get that with Rivera, Morich, Train, Only, and I think Albanese. So they will not really attack him at all. The group semi-functions for six, seven kilometers for the large part. He, he keeps it going for the most part, but he's not having to chase down attacks like he did before with Hamilton, Laurence, and Witraga eventually catching back up. But now we're close enough to the finish, and with Roland, attacker de Pierre Roland going, that means Enios and DSM kind of do Vingegaard's work for him. So he escapes disaster, but still, if he's done too much, if you lose a few seconds or get over, overtaken and don't get the bonus seconds on this finish, the gaps are so small that you can lose the GC lead, but he doesn't. Only leads it out initially with Vingegaard going over the top. Morich losing the wheel, but holding on just enough eventually to maintain second ahead of Only on GC. And Vingegaard once again beating Oscar Only, the 19-year-old on the DSM Conti Dev team. Just by a half bike length, what a performance from! I know it's two one race since in October, but still, ah, uh, you got to watch out for this guy next year. Obviously, hugely talented, and Vingegaard gives him and the town of Labin his blessing after winning another stage ahead of Only. Then Morich on two seconds, Albanese on three seconds with Rivera, Train, Laurence, Pierre Roland, and Buitrago last year rounding out the top ten in terms of GC. If Morich wins tomorrow's stage or only, and Vingegaard doesn't get any bonus seconds, Morich will win GC because the bonus seconds at the finish. So this isn't a wrap yet. It's kind of a similar stage. Could be a sprint. Could be a punchy group as the first couple of stages. So it suits Morich. Here's what Vingegaard had to say after the stage. Oh, not comfortable at all. I uh, I had to gamble a bit, uh, and then yeah, luckily uh, yeah, only he took the lead, and then. Um, yeah, we, we could catch him and I could take the stage win, so of course I'm I'm very happy happy to uh, take the win today. And now you seem pretty confident that you're going to take GC tomorrow in Zagreb. Oh, I don't know, I mean, uh, I don't have so many seconds to uh, Matej Mohoric, so uh, I think it will, yeah, I won't, uh, I won't celebrate before tomorrow we are at the finish line, so uh, yeah, there's still a chance he can take the jersey. And how did you like racing here today? Yeah, it was very nice. Uh, today it reminded me a bit of uh, Basque Country. Uh, really hard racing from, from the start. So, uh, so yeah, it was a nice race today. We, uh, we made it hard. The Croy race has certainly delivered so far this year. Looking forward to tomorrow's stage. Make sure you subscribe down below if you want to see that final recap. Until then, ciao.